to the Colorado 4-H Remote STEM Lab. Did you know that by participating in 4-H while growing up, folks are nearly four times more likely to contribute to their communities, about two times more likely to be civically active, and nearly two times more likely to participate in science programs during out-of-school time, and nearly two times more likely to make healthier choices in life. If you are between the ages of 5 and 18 and would like to be a 4-H member, or you're an adult and would like to volunteer for 4-H, please contact your Colorado State University Extension Office and just ask for anyone in 4-H. They'll be grateful you called and be very happy to help you. Before we get going on our experiments today, let's do the 4-H pledge, just as we would with any club group meeting. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Hello, and once again, welcome back to the Colorado 4-H Remote STEM Lab. I'm the Psy Guy, and I'm sure glad that you could join me today. If you were with us last time, you'll remember that we talked about states of matter, and we did some experiments around liquids, and we looked at the viscosity of liquids, and how well they flowed or did not flow and what the addition of sugars did to the sugar water we made and how we did density columns and what happens with different liquids as you mix them together or not and remember we talked about the miscibility of of liquids and how well they mix together in today's experiments we're going to take it one step further we're going to still look at liquids but then we're going to also explore how liquids can act like solids or have properties of solids and how solids can also be reverted back to liquids through a ooey gooey kind of experimentation that we're going to do and I hope you have fun and right now what we'll do to get started is we will go over and we'll just recap real quick where we were last time and what we talked about with those liquids and move it to the next state of matter which would be our solid. We have three experiments today, and there, through these experiments, we're going to investigate the states of matter. We're going to investigate how adding or withdrawing heat energy from a substance can change its properties. And we're going to also look at polymers and how polymers are used to make things like plastics and stuff like that, and, and what that actually looks like in an experiment that we could do right here in the home. Before we get going, we have a few vocabulary words to review so that you will know what those really cool science words mean when we use them throughout this video. The vocabulary words for today's experiments are viscosity, a liquid's resistance to flow, Newtonian fluids, when a liquid's viscosity depends on its temperature, they're known as Newtonian fluids. Newtonian fluids are not only called Newtonian fluids because their viscosity depends on their temperature, but because the original work and science that was done with Newtonian fluids and, and other fluid experiments were done by Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton, who is on the right, was born in 1642 and lived till 1727. He did a lot of experiments in science and he's widely known for many of his contributions such as our understanding of gravity and how gravity works. He did a lot in the picture you can see that he is working with light so he did a lot of light experiments and he also did experiments among other things with fluids. Atoms are single particles also known as elements. Ions are charged atoms with either a positive or a negative charge much like a battery that you would use in your remote control. Molecules are bundles of atoms that make up building blocks of matter. And polymer. Many similar molecules are bonded together in large numbers to make polymers. For our first experiment we are going to use three cups. I have those right here. And I am going to take some corn syrup. Remember we used corn syrup in the last one. It's a common household kitchen item. I'm going to take my three cups and I am going to fill my three cups about halfway full of corn syrup 
in each cup. I don't need a whole lot. I just want enough to be able to uh, play around with here. Same thing here, same corn syrup, same liquid. All right, there you go. Now, I'm going to do a couple of different things. Remember when we talked about Newtonian fluids? Newtonian fluids are simply fluids that have a change or experience a change in their viscosity depending on how much heat energy are in those fluids. So if we were to take our corn syrup and we pour them in all three cups, I'm going to change the different viscosities of these liquids or try to, that's what this experiment will do, by cooling one, leaving one at room temperature, which is the temperature we have here, 70 degrees, and I'm going to slightly heat one. In order to keep track of which one's which, I'm just going to use my friends over here, the food coloring. And I am going to add a little yellow. I'm just going to put two drops. One, two. I'm going to try a little green. One, two. And then I'm going to do red. One, two. Two drops of your favorite color food coloring on each um, glass of corn syrup. To get the corn syrup to mix well, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take a stirring rod and I'm going to mix them up. And you can see I'm getting a nice yellow color here. So I want to turn my corn syrup. Now I'll be able to know by the color that the corn syrup in is which corn syrup is which. Which ones I cool down, which one I keep at room temperature, and which one I heat up slightly. Same thing with the green. I'm going to stir that up. Nice color green there. This actually is kind of candy because it's corn syrup. It's Syrup. Remember yesterday we were talking about that and it's, um, it's a lot of sugar is what it is. So it's mainly sugar. But there we go. Now we have a nice yellow, a nice green, and a nice red. I'm going to now take my green corn syrup and I'm going to put it in the fridge over here. And I'm going to let it start cooling down. When you do this, you're going to need to cool your green corn syrup for probably about 10 minutes or so, or just enough to get it cooled down because the cooler it gets, remember what a refrigerator or a freezer does, they're called heat movers. They're called heat movers because when we put items in there, they take the heat energy from those items, remove it, and cool the items down. And so that's what's happening with the corn syrup in the refrigerator. It's cooling down by removing that heat energy from the corn syrup. The yellow corn syrup in my yellow cup, I'm going to leave right here and I'm going to keep that at room temperature. The red corn syrup, I'm going to take to the microwave and I'm just going to heat this for just a few seconds, maybe like five seconds or so. No more than 10 for sure. I'm going to stick probably between 5 and 10 seconds. You don't want to heat up your current corn syrup more than 10 seconds. If your corn syrup, when you pull it back out of the uh, microwave, if it's bubbling, remember syrup is a lot of has a lot of sugar in it and it's very viscous, right? So if it pours on you and it's hot, it's hard to get it off and it'll keep burning. So we don't want to A, get it too hot to where it's so hot that it'll burn you. And two, we don't want to spill it when we get it back out of the um, microwave. Okay, I'm just putting the red corn syrup in the microwave. I have a microwave right here. Just for a few seconds, let's just time it. This is how much. One, two, three, four, five. You like how my watch works? All right. I did a good job. It's not boiling. 
and I can feel the warmth through the glass so I definitely have warmed this up. I have pre-cooled some green corn syrup so that we can look at this experiment um, a little bit more quick for the sake of time. I am now taking a cup and I'm going to start with my green corn syrup. Remember the green is the corn syrup that I chilled in the refrigerator and I removed that heat energy from the corn syrup. Let's see what it did to the viscosity and compare the viscosities. Look at how slow that's pouring. It's pouring very, very slow. And it's even piling up onto the bottom of my cup when I pour it into this other cup. So you can see that that is very slow. You see how that's so syrupy and slow? Look at that. Boom. That's because we've refrigerated this and by removing the heat energy, we have actually affected its, visco its viscosity. It's a fun word to say, right? So it has, it's more viscous now that we've removed the heat energy from this liquid. All right, we'll do that. The next one I'm going to pour is going to be the yellow corn syrup. Remember the yellow corn syrup is the corn syrup that we left at room temperature. So it is the temperature of the room that I'm standing in here, which is about 70 degrees. You remember how slow the cold green corn syrup flowed? Let's see what the difference is when we pour this yellow. Wow, that pours a little bit faster, doesn't it? That's pretty crazy. And if we pour it to the side of the cup just a little bit, we may be able to get the different densities to separate and make us a little corn syrup density column. Look, we kind of did too, didn't we? Look at that. Okay, if you remember the red is the corn syrup that I heated no more than 10 seconds. It doesn't take much, just enough to add heat energy to the corn syrup. Okay. Now let's watch this and see what the viscosity of this corn syrup is like. Wow, that pours a whole lot faster, doesn't it? That's pretty neat. Wow, that didn't take long at all. Look at the differences. I can see a green, a yellow, and then a red. Now they separated, it's all corn syrup, right? So there's not really much difference in the density of these corn syrups, right? Because they're the same corn syrup. Um, we did add energy and remove energy from it. And so the, the viscosity of it um, changed. So therefore, we know by definition that corn syrup is a Newtonian liquid, much like water. Our first experiment today takes two ingredients. So those two ingredients are cornstarch. You can find cornstarch very easily in your kitchen, I bet. Um, it's used in cooking for thickening sauces and things like that. Uh, the other one is just plain simple tap water. I have a pitcher of tap water here so that I can use uh, to do these experiments. And easy, it's free, it's right out of the tap in the kitchen. To begin this process, I am going to take two measuring cups. I'm going to place them here and I am going to take my corn starch, open that up, and I'm going to take one quarter cup of corn starch. When, you, when you're measuring in a, a, in a uh, cup, a measuring cup, and you're measuring liquids like flour, sugars, things like that, um, you'll see that it kind of piles up and here I have half of my cup is kind of empty the other half of my cup is over full so I'm just going to take a screwdriver again like I said just using things I can find around my house and I'm going to very carefully move some of that liquid into that empty spot in the cup and then I'm going to put my screwdriver on top of my cup far enough along so that when I scoop it across, I scoop across all the cup, all the way around. And you can see now I have a nice flat measured one quarter cup of cornstarch. I'm gonna take my first bowl and I'm gonna put my cornstarch in there just like that. 
and then I'm going to set it to the side right there. Very good. All right, let's put that away. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water and I am going to take enough water into my cornstarch. Um, let me just pour some water in here. This is where you got to kind of guess at what you're doing a little bit. So the idea here is that we want to add water to the cornstarch, stir it so that we make a liquid um, that will act as a liquid but if we tap on it, then it our finger doesn't go into it. It's hard enough that it'll be like tapping the palm of your hand and it'll just act more like a solid. In doing that, I'm gonna take my quarter or my tablespoon and I have done this once or twice. I know that I'm gonna be able to add, let's see, one, two, three. Let's start with four tablespoons of water. Then I'm going to take a stirring rod and I'm going to start stirring that up and it does not take it long at all until it starts getting like kind of crunchy like a like I'm mixing up plaster or something but I know that I can use some more water so I'm going to put more water in there and it's mixing up. I'm looking for kind of a pasty kind of look here you can see it's kind of still really kind of wet looking but it's definitely starting to act the way I want it. You see how that's acting? It's looking like a liquid and yet I can put my stir rod in there and it will act more like a solid or like a hard putty, right? It's just kind of interesting, right? Once I have what I figure is enough water in here, you can see that it's kind of, stuff is kind of crazy, isn't it? It flows like a liquid, but I can push it back in there and it will go right back in there and it doesn't get anything wet. That's kind of neat. So let's have a little fun with this. If I take it, you can see that it's viscous. It pours, you see it pouring into my hand and I can pour it. I'm just gonna let a bunch pour in there. There's a big old goop right there. There we go. Let's get my hand. I'm gonna play with this stuff. You can do the same. This is pretty safe stuff. It's just cornstarch with water. Look at that. If I look at, make your observations. Observations are important. So I'm gonna sit there and we're pouring it in the palm of my hand, but look what I pick it up. That pour breaks off, you see that? See how it's breaking off? Kind of neat, huh? But it'll still pour. Have you ever seen a liquid just break off like that? I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Look at my hand. I got all this stuff in my hand, this ooey gooey stuff, right? But watch what I can do. I can take this, I'm just gonna roll it. See how that broke? Look at how that breaks. Roll it into my hand, and then I'm just gonna start melting. Is it melting? No, it's just relaxing. And so I can take that. Let's make a ball out of that since I can play with it. Okay, now look at that. I got a ball. But, ball of putty stuff, right? Cornstarch putty. But what happens when I put this? Will it hold its form? What do you think? Will this hold its form? I don't know. It's kind of holding it while I play with it, but if I just let it sit there, all of a sudden, it starts to act like a liquid again and pour down the side of my palm which is kind of just goofy crazy but look I can just hmm so what's going on here what do you think again what we've done is we've taken water and added it to cornstarch definitely the more I play with it the more crumbly it gets right I can break it apart and just it, and it doesn't flow like a liquid like you would think the water does or even oil or even the corn syrup we used in the last show right so but I can stick these pieces together and I can put them in the palm of my hand and then the stuff will melt I'm just gonna add just a touch more water 
see what I can get this stuff to do. Using my finger to stir it up. You, you can add water too if you want to see what it, what kind of changes you can observe. Look at that. It sloshes like water. You see that sloshing? It pours like a liquid. It breaks apart like a plastic kind of stuff. Definitely pours around in my hand. I can ball it up. And then it just melts again. Ball it up. And then it just melts again. Pretty cool stuff. You can, I, something tells me you guys will have a lot of fun with this. Um, do your folks a favor though when you're doing this at home. Do it over a uh, newspaper or something that you won't make a big mess. Do it outside. You can do it outside um, in your yard or something. Um, that way you won't make a big mess and you won't get in trouble. Alright, I'm going to put that back in there. You can see that works. I can be kind of sloppy because I'm the side guy and I have this bench that I built specific for doing experiments with you and so I intended all along to make messes on my desktop because that's what I made the desk for. Alright. Alright, the nice stuff about this though is if you do get it on your table, um, it's very easy to clean up. We just take a little bit of water, paper towel. Remember we use water to start this in the first place so you know water is friends with the, with the, with the putty we made. And you can just wipe it right up and it comes right up so maybe you won't get as much trouble as maybe I said you would. but. It's always nice to be respectful of your folks' house and not make a mess. Now that you have your cornstarch mix and we played around with it and we know that in the glass it flows like water and it moves around, but if we start working with it and putting it in between our fingers and balling it up and stuff, that it kind of changes the way it acts, right? It acts more like a solid um, or not as much as a liquid, right? So what do you think is happening with this liquid? Why does it do that? Why can I pour it like water and then ball it up like putty, let it set, and then it turns into liquid again? It's kind of neat, right? Well, the answer is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your question with an analogy. An analogy is just kind of a story or an example of something else that represents the way this stuff works. Notice again the way this putty reacts to me messing with it. I'm adding pressure to this liquid, right? And as I add pressure, pressure is coming from me just balling it up, moving it around in my hands, and making it act more like a, a kind of a solid, almost. not so liquid-like, right? But if I let it relax, again, it turns into a liquid starts rolling down my hand. So this is changing its viscosity not because I'm adding or taking away heat energy. This changes its viscosity because I'm adding pressure. Think about it this way. Think about when it's class change time at school or you're at lunch time at school and there are a lot of kids in the hallways so if you were in a crowded hallway at school and you were standing on one end of that hallway and you started running as fast as you can with your eyes closed straight down that hallway, how far do you think you would get before you started hitting other students? I don't recommend that you try this because you would definitely hit other students, right? You probably wouldn't get very far before you ran into someone. This is kind of what the liquid's doing. As I keep putting pressure on it, the harder I put pressure on it, the more it crumbles and the harder it is for me to push my fingers through. This is very much in the way that other things that we know about act, like quicksand. If you ever get caught in quicksand, 
you don't want to move very fast because the faster you move the more pressure you put on that liquid that because quicksand is a liquid right um, and the more pressure you put on that liquid and the harder it would be for you to remove yourself because it starts acting more like a, a, a block of solid that you're in as opposed to a liquid sand. If you were to be at the end of the same hallway and you were to very slowly and with your eyes open just kind of calmly walk down the middle of that hallway and gave people time to move around you as you walk down the hallway chances are you would make it all the way down the hallway and not disturb people and certainly not run into them that's what's happening here as well when I stop rushing around with it and adding pressure to this ball of cornstarch and water mix and I let it just relax then those molecules have time to move and much like you walking down that hallway and walking in between people that's why when you don't add pressure it acts more like a liquid but if you do add pressure it acts more like a solid it's tougher so because the viscosity of this liquid changes due to pressure that's applied is it a Newtonian fluid no this fluid is called a non-Newtonian fluid meaning that its viscosity changes due to pressure as opposed to due to uh, heat energy. For our last experiment we're going to investigate polymers. Remember a polymer is large chains of similar or like molecules that are attached together into long strings. To give you an example of what a polymer is I have when I was boiling my water I got double bang for the buck if you will because I have now boiled some spaghetti noodles I have a plate and I am just going to take some spaghetti noodles that I have boiled and I'm gonna stick them on my plate for a demonstration looking at the spaghetti noodles you can see that they are long and stringy and they are in a continuous chain of connections, right? Because we know that a spaghetti noodle is made of flour and egg and mixed together and turned into noodles and then boiled so that we can make spaghetti, right? Well, molecules and polymers are kind of like the same thing. They connect together and the way that their chemical uh, composition is chemical composition means the atoms and molecules the way they come together that they create long strings and when you put a lot of polymers together it's kind of like the spaghetti on this plate not only does it have width in both directions but it also has height as I can take spaghetti and I can pile it up so now we have one dimension from front to back a second dimension from side to side and then a third dimension which is where it's stacked so it's a three-dimensional complex or a three-dimensional network of noodles polymers act the very much the same way let's have some fun with some polymers and do an experiment to see exactly what this is like the third experiment today we're going to use the following materials I have a jug of water here I have a container of white glue it's just your regular glue uh, school glue they call it or any kind of generic glue will do and I have some mule, uh, 20 mule team borax borax is a laundry detergent additive and you would find it in the aisle with your laundry detergents and softeners to get going on this experiment I'm going to take two mixing cups I'm going to take some of my borax I have one tablespoon here I'm going to take one tablespoon of borax I'm going to put it in the first mixing cup and in that with that I am going to take five tablespoons of water one two three four five and I am going to stir them up okay. 
you want to stir this until the borax is completely dissolved into the water so it might take a few minutes to get this stirred and at the end if you have just a couple particles of the borax that has it stirred in or mixed in into solution with your water then that's okay too we're just going to mix it the best we can it will all come out in the wash <laughs> get it borax laundry detergent wash side guy humor there okay put that over there and our next mixing cup I'm going to take the glue and I am going to take one tablespoon of water and I'm going to add one tablespoon of water to this cup and I am going to take one tablespoon of glue and add it to that water Make sure I get all of that in there. Okay, once I have all the glue in the water, I'm going to take my stir rod and I'm going to mix this up too. I'm going to take my stir rod and I'm going to mix this up too. I'm going to mix this until it is all the same. When I look in there, I'm not going to see lumps, I'm not going to see strings of glue or anything like that. I'm going to mix it into the water to where it all looks like it was all one solution. Very nice. It doesn't take as long with the water and the glue as it does with the borax and the water in the other cup. So I'm going to set this aside. I can still see in the bottom of my first mixing cup with the borax and the water that I need to stir this up some more if you remember when I mixed up the cornstarch solution with the water and cornstarch I didn't add any food coloring to that so we got a nice white I thought it was kind of nice white is, is, is a pleasant color as well um, this one though I think I want to put a little food coloring in there so I'm gonna try an orange and Unlike purple that I did last show, purple was red and green. Today I'm going to do orange, and orange is a mix of yellow and red. So I'm going to take one, put this over here, in my glue and water solution, I'm going to take and put one drop of red, one, and one drop of yellow food coloring again I'm making this in my glue and water solution and I'm gonna stir that up watch what happens I get a really cool looking red uh, yellow or I'm sorry orange so now I have orange in my I have orange glue and water that's what that is okay the fun comes when I add the borax and then later I'm going to explain to you why I'm adding borax to got some stuff going on there why I'm adding borax to my um, glue okay I'm gonna stir this borax up I'm gonna stir this and I'm going to start pouring my borax solution into my glue look what happens watch this as I it congealed, didn't it? Look at that. Pretty cool. I'm stirring this up so that I get a good mix of all the ingredients. Remember we had glue and water, one tablespoon of each, and then we had one tablespoon of borax laundry detergent and then we did five tablespoons of water and now I have this really cool stuff let me get my spaghetti plate back out and let's just see what we came up with 
look at my goop. They call this gloop because it's made with glue. I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it around. And see what I can do with it. Mixing it up. All right. Look at this now. It's kind of still kind of slimy. But you can see what are you observing? It's kind of holding its shape, right? It's kind of also kind of like a putty, right? So do you think that that is a liquid? This is where it gets really interesting because now that you can see it's starting to work itself. It's got to get time for those molecules to interact with each other. I'm going to explain what happened between the borax and the glue in just a second. As you can see now I'm getting a nice little a nice little clump of gloop. So it's kind of like a silly putty. I'm hoping you're doing this at home and having fun and enjoying this weirdness with me, right? Okay, let's do some different things with this. What can we do? We can pull it apart. What happens if we pull it apart? Remember when we poured the corn syrup? I mean, sorry. Remember when we poured the corn starch and then I dripped it down and lifted it, it would break off? Let's see if this what this does. So I'm gonna pull this. Wow, this is a lot tougher, huh? But it does come apart, look at that. As I pull it apart and I add pressure, by pulling it, it falls apart. What if we put it back together? Yeah, it sticks back together, doesn't it? Look at that. I take it and roll it into a cylinder and then I pull on it. It kind of breaks apart after it gets so much, but it's really kind of acting more like a rubber band now, right? Kind of neat. What happens if I ball it up and we let it set? We'll come back to that. I have another piece of gloop that I made earlier. It's also orange. And so what do you think is the happening with this? Being with this. Look how this breaks off. But it also melts right back into itself to make one ball again. In this experiment, we dealt with polymers. Polymers came from the glue. They are long chains of molecules. Um, these polymers, much like the spaghetti noodles, acted in a three-dimensional network. And in glue, what happens is those polymers, we put them on two surfaces. We put the two surfaces together. And when all the water dries out of the glue, those polymers and those long things uh, those long polymers or those long chains of molecules take the form of the surfaces we apply them to and then they stick together and they'll glue the two surfaces together. What we did in this experiment is we took the polymers from the glue and then we added the borax. The borax has boric ions in them and those boric ions are what hold the polymers together. So thinking about it, we can have two long polymers here represented by these spaghetti strings, but they are two separate pieces, right? When we add the borax, what happens is the ions are those charged atoms, those charged particles in the borax act as a bonding agent to help bond the two polymers together so that they act as one. And when you have these long strings of polymers that are being bonded together and also mixed up into a big huge network of one dimension, two dimension, three dimensional forms, then you get stuff like gloop. Polymers are what make up all plastics. So the corn syrup that I used here is in a plastic bottle. Well, 
the technology we have today is such that we can take these polymers, put them into a shape, and then we can harden them off to where they make bottles. You've seen other plastic bottles like your soda bottles, water bottles, milk jugs, all of those things are made of polymers. And they're long chains of molecules that are held together by bonding agents. In this case, the bonding agents we got from the borax solution. Going back to the sample of glue that we left on the table here, remember it was a big... Here you can see that it actually has started to settle back down. So those molecules, like the um, molecules in the cornstarch solution, started to settle once they could rest. So if I keep playing with this stuff, the harder it gets, and then if I let it rest, the molecules have time to start settling and start flowing their way in towards gravity and be and and act more like a fluid and flow more like a slow fluid with a very high viscous viscosity. Now knowing how the polymers in gloop work and what they feel like and, and, and act like, what is your guess? Are is the gloop Newtonian fluid or is it a non-Newtonian fluid? Think about that. We'll talk about it again next time. And I appreciate you joining me today. This is the Psy Guy signing off. Be good, be well, and have fun.